My name is Katie Blackley. I am a digital editor and reporter with 90.5 WESA. We are the local NPR station and public radio, so we are listener supported. And it's been an interesting summer, but I'm really glad to be talking with you all. I am the main producer of our Good Question series, which is a listener oriented, created, inspired program that we've been doing for about three years. It originally started in Chicago under this group called Harkin, and they would do Curious City is what it was called. And it's based on people sending in questions that they've always wondered about Pittsburgh or the city that they live in or the region where they are. And then I go out and I try to answer them for them. So we've gotten over 900 questions in the past few years. So it's, it's impossible to answer them all because we are a small newsroom, but we do what we can and it's been really fun. We get anything from, you know, why is Pittsburghese a thing? Why do people say yins and nat and all that stuff? To, you know, what used to be on my street? Why is it called this specific thing? So it's been a lot of fun. Um, we've been able to do a few different programs around it, like engaging people back when that was a thing. And yeah, so I'm here to tell you a little bit about some of the stories that I've produced. I chose four for you. Um, the first one is, the title of it is Carp Fishing and Eating Popcorn Under the Brilliant Viaduct Over Washington Boulevard. So if you've ever been to kind of Homewood-ish, Larimer area, there's to these huge arches and they're just like, look like they belong in ancient Rome or something. And we had a gentleman named Jeff write into the series and say, you know, what are these things? I pass under them all the time and I just never really thought to ask. And that's why we're here. So the first thing I did was, was talk to my historian friends. So there's this guy named um, Bruce who does a blog called PGH Bridges and he's compiled this wonderful archival, just trove of information on his website. And I found out a little bit about it from that. So I called up Bruce and I was like, Bruce, what's going on here? Like, what is this thing? And he was able to give me some information about it. And it used to be part of a train track like that went through the East End and there's viaducts and there's aqueducts. You may have heard these terms before. So he was able to kind of walk me through those things. Um, and they're there and they were built at a time when, you know, trains were God. I mean, industry was everything in Pittsburgh. So they really transformed the landscape to reflect that. And so those are still there. A lot of the train tracks in the city have since been removed, but those remain and they are staples of that community. They're just, they're in old postcards of the region. So then we started talking a little bit more and we, we were looking at some archival um, maps. because There's online, if you go to Historic Pittsburgh, there are these great old maps of the city. You can go from, you know, I think the earliest one is 17 something, like late 1700s, and they go up to about 1923, and then they have satellite images. But before that, it was um, these old archival, people just drew them, and there was a lake there. And so then I was like, okay, this lake, I mean, it's no longer there. There's not, you know, it's just like a parking lot now. So I knew that I needed another voice. I had the kind of historian academic voice. And then I was like, I need to find someone who remembers that lake. So I am part of a group on Facebook of Homewood, um, had a high school called Westinghouse, does have a high school called Westinghouse still, but I'm part of their alumni group through a different project I did. Um, I am not an alumni of Westinghouse High School, but they were very gracious to allow me in there. And I was just like, hey, does anybody remember this? Like, do you?" have any memory of what this used to be it was called Silver Lake. And I heard back from a couple people who went to Westinghouse or who lived in Homewood at the time. And that's one of the great things about this series is you get to engage with people from around the community and hear their stories. So I talked to two people um, and they, they don't remember the lake because it was kind of dried up by the time that and no one's really alive that would remember it anymore, but they remember stories about it. And people used to go carp fishing there. There was like an ice, thing back when that was a thing. Just this whole great history of it. But they remember it as a drive-in because it used to be a, the Silver Lake drive-in right near Westinghouse High School. And the one gentleman told me he used to um, get out of school and they used to break into the drive-in and eat popcorn. Um, you know, just funny, goofy teenage stuff. And so I was able to put all those voices together. And then once I have that, my next step is to write a script. So I have all the audio, I've done all the interviews of the people. Back then I was able to do them in person. Now we mostly do Zoom or I call people or sometimes we'll stand in a park and social distance interview kind of thing. But I was able to put all the, the conversations together and come up with a script. 
And the next process is I go to my editor and I tell her, okay, I'm ready to go. Like, let's do an edit. And we do what's called a live edit. So I will read my text, my voice, my script as it would be. And then I'll play all the different clips for her so she can hear that audio. And it's, it's a really good way, especially for radio, but I recommend it to anybody who writes to read your stuff out loud because you'll catch errors. You'll just listen and you're like, that's not really how I would normally say that. You know, this isn't in my voice. Or you'll find things that, you know, really inspire you and you want to go further with them. So we did an edit with it and then she gave me some notes. Sometimes we shorten things, sometimes we tighten them. And then I put it together. So you can listen to that. There's pictures, um, really fun stuff. And that was the answer to that question and why it still exists and why it's still, you know, representative of the region's history. Um, yeah, so I'm currently working on a story about Frick Park. And if you've been walking around quarantine walks and all that good stuff, which a lot of people have, we've got a lot of questions about this. Frick Park has a trail called Fire Lane Trail. And it is named as such, I'm not gonna give you every, every detail yet, but it's named for a reason. And there are actually fire hydrants kind of stationed in a hodgepodge kind of way, but all throughout that part of the park. And we've got a lot of people asking, you know, what are they doing there? Cause they're really old. Like they're even sinking into the woods in some sections and they're very rusty and they're even, they just don't look like modern fire hydrants. So you can tell they've been there for a while. So I'm investigating that. I have an answer and hopefully I can get that story out in a little bit. So thank you so much for listening to me. Um, keep being curious and listen to the station and, and learn about the city.